I won't watch this anymore! Growing up, there were only two anime that I enjoyed watching, Dragon Ball Z and Yu Yu Hakusho. As a child, I didn't care for the fighting and visual effects. I cared only little for the plot and the distinctive characters. The main reason why I kept watching these anime is because of comfort. I have fond memories of my brother and I running home from school witnessing Trunks' transformation. Fond memories of the two of us staying up countless nights with a bowl of popcorn and a cup of ice discovering the Dark World Tournament. What I'm trying to say is after my childhood ended and my brother went away to college, there was no reason for me to care for anime because I don't like the explicit sexual themes it showcases. I don't like the overdramatic expressions the characters make. I don't like the pacing of anime. I don't like the dialogue in anime and why characters feel the need to discuss every little action, especially in the middle of battle. I absolutely hate that anime characters look white instead of Asian and I know I, I know this is a very Western opinion listen I know everything I just complained about doesn't exist in all anime I know that my opinions in this medium of content is very much frowned upon throughout my life I've been told that I hate anime so for this video series I'm going to dedicate a percentage of my life to find an understanding to why people love and have such an emotional attachment to certain anime I, I just never cared for. Victory of Death Starfighters, my name is Carlin Jones and this is day one of my journey on discovering why I hate anime. For today's video, I will be reviewing and discussing four random anime that I found online. I'm going to be as open-minded as possible and have zero expectations. So with that said, let's get into it. It's my fault! Oh no! Have a good night. Okay, let's go! Very Private Lesson is a late 90s anime. To be more specific, it's an ecchi, an ecchi anime, which apparently that means it's very heavy on sexual imagery. I'm not gonna lie to you, Very Private Lesson is borderline pornography. And I say borderline because there's so many perverted daydream sequences in this series, but for me, this was somewhat tolerable because the explicitness of the sexual themes presented in this anime does have a purpose in its storytelling. Out of all the anime I have lined up to watch, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, Very Private Lesson is by far the funniest out of all of them, and it's mostly due to the voice acting and dialogue. So, I truly meant what I said by giving all anime I watch a fair chance. I was so close to quitting on this series because in the first five minutes, the anime made crude jokes about adults romanticizing teenage girls. I wanted to stop and pick a different anime right then and there, but fortunately for me, the anime took a complete right turn and introduced the concept of the series. Well, sir, yeah, I just have one simple question. Why is it that you want your daughter to stay with me? How come? Very Private Lesson is a comedy about a high school teacher named Haraku, whom, after meeting and making a favorable impression on a 16-year-old student, her father, a Yakuza crime boss, forces him to protect his daughter at all costs. Very Private Lesson is light on story, but its sexual symbolism sheds a blind truth to how sex is viewed in Japan. Again, this anime is strictly a comedy, so all the taboo topics it focuses on, such as rape, fetishes, and wet dreams, is making fun of them. It's okay. I'll just wander the streets, get attacked, and painfully raped by someone, and then my body will be found in the river tomorrow morning. That's horrible! I honestly didn't think I would laugh at this series, but the voice acting throughout is incredible. Honestly, I think I have a new favorite voice actor. The comedic timing, dialogue, and the sound effects each actor makes had me laughing nonstop. You're, uh, you're naked! Oh, oh, no! Ah, ah. Oh! Driver, please, let's get out of here! Bye, see ya! Oh! oh. I forgot my day! 
So there's a lot of characters in Very Private Lesson, but I'm only going to be talking about one, and that's Teraku. He's a 24 year old high school teacher who's very clumsy, very awkward, and a bit quiet when expressing his views on sex. It's actually very smart writing how this anime uses all its characters to be different aspects of sex. For an example, mostly every character is a different kind of pervert. They interact with Teraku in such different ways, which is pretty funny because he's not so much of a pervert himself. I thought most of the jokes in visual comedy a very private lesson to be laugh out loud funny, except for the first five minutes. Okay, I'm doubling down on that. If you really want to watch this anime, skip the first five minutes. And it was just so awkward. And listen, I know the age of consent here in America is very different from other countries, but the beginning was so hard for me to watch. So this is an extremely easy anime to watch. There's only two episodes. Yeah, only two episodes being 38 minutes apiece. So it's a little difficult to say which episode is the best because they all tackle different themes and situations the characters are going through. Although I will say the second episode is a little bit more serious because something tragic is gonna happen. But there's still a lot of comedy to break up that dramatic tension. So my thoughts on Very Private Lesson. I love the voice acting. I really like Teraku as a character, but holy crap, is this such a weird anime? I don't I don't think I would ever watch an an ecchi type an anime again because I'm not really into the explicit sexual themes in the show, but I really did appreciate that it had a reason for being that sexual in its story, rather than just being sexual just to be sexual, which you see a lot in shows here in America. Did I enjoy this anime? Yes. Will I ever watch it again? No. <laughs> but again, I was very surprised on how much I laughed at this. So yeah, if I'm going to rate this, um, maybe like a 7-ish, 7.5. And I know that's like, ugh, I, I should rate it higher, but this was such a short anime. It's just, I, I want it more. I wanted to laugh more, but it being so short kind of hindered it because I wanted to know what happened to these characters, which again, apparently that's a normal thing. My friends keep telling me, no, anime usually only lasts about a season. So yeah, I would rate this 7-ish, 7.8. I'm going to give it a 7.8. Best anime thus far. Carried by the Wind is an early 2000s anime. I love 2D animation. There's just something about it. I feel that no matter what the series is about or you know what it is, the cartoon, the cartoonish animation style can always be distinguished from all other animations, which is pretty much why I stopped caring for 3D animation. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say I love samurai culture, the history, the outfits, the weapons, just a minute into this anime and I'm already wanting to know more about the time period and its characters. Unfortunately, after finishing this pilot episode, this series has a non-existing soundtrack. Maybe I'm off for thinking this way, but I feel to make a successful samurai series, the soundtrack is what should drive the show. Every episode I watch, I just felt that I was reminded that there's nothing special playing when these characters have heart to hearts or, you know, uh, when there's an emotional battle taking place, which sucks. There's only two characters in this anime and they're honestly the best part of the series. There's Ron Tsukich, who is a quote unquote young beautiful samurai. And then there's Miao, a Chinese martial artist who has a heart of gold. Ron is a bit of a Mary Sue, but for how this anime is formatted and how the story is structured, it actually works in its favor. She's a bit of a drunk because all she really wants to do is sleep and drink sake. I thought you'd like to have this. Ah, oh, a bottle of sake. Oh, that's genuine grade A premium. Oh, that's sake. Oh, don't waste it. A drop of sake is like a drop of blood. You will shed one tear for every single drop that is thoughtlessly wasted. Her skills with a katana is, oh, okay, so she is basically unbeatable. Her speed, her balance, her intelligence, any foe she comes across in the series, it's just, <laughs> they have no chance in beating her.
Which, yeah, the fight scenes were cool, but I, I guess after a few episodes, they kind of got dull, especially when you knew no one's gonna beat her. But for me personally, the best thing about Ren is her personality. Hi. The ice blooded woman! What are you doing here? Nobody wants to see your face! Oh, I'm here for this. Fresh caught sashimi and a shot of sake. Ah! Mm. She's actually really funny when she plays off of Meow's naive nature and how the only things that keeps her going in life is seeing justice dealt to evil people and a warm cup of sake. You're a serious yes. drinker, aren't you? Meow is another funny character because she's highly skilled in the art of iron catfish. With being reckless and overly energetic, Meow never failed to bring me laughs in every single episode. Again, this anime is okay, but it really makes it worth watching for me for the relationship between Meow and Ron. They're polar opposites and will often start off the episode hating each other to only realizing they need each other in their lives. By far the most memorable part of the series is when they both showcase their different personalities with their fighting styles. With 13 episodes, 24 minutes apiece, Carry It By The Wind is another anime that's pretty easy to get into. Most of the episodes are fun, with this series finale being fucking awful. Whole, okay, honestly, I, I was looking forward to seeing the characters, if they were gonna say goodbye to each other, or you know, maybe if there was gonna be some type of sacrifice or any stakes uh, being had, or, but instead, all I got was the most boring plot with the fastest lackluster of an action scene. The conflict of the episode and how they had to help this woman who was being married against her will. It was just boring, honestly. They introduced a new character who's a samurai who knew Ron from back in the past, but did we get any flashbacks to explain their relationships? No. Was there any good chemistry between Ron and this old samurai friend of hers? No. Just a bad, this was just a bad episode. And honestly, it left such a bad taste in my mouth to the point where there's no way I can <laughs> rate this anime a positive score. There's absolutely no way. Nevertheless, there was one episode that was insanely good. Episode 9, I counted on an enemy. You can honestly just skip every episode in the season and just start off with this one because it gives you such great backstory for Meow's character. The episode starts off with Meow discovering a lifeless body on the road. Well, it turns out that body isn't lifeless and it's actually Ron. Ron is laid out across the road because she hasn't eaten anything in days. It was here where Meow suggests that the the two of them should travel to a nearby town where she heard a former childhood friend is visiting. As the two travel to the nearby town, Meow is reunited with her childhood friend, Mei. With being treated to amazing hospitality, it was here where you kind of realize between Meow and Mei, only one of them truly grew up. Oh hey, how's your father doing, Mei? He's still making the shopping rice He's cakes? He's dead! Oh. That illness he suffered from took his life. It happened right after you had gone away in search of adventure. Mom worked her fingers to the bone and died also, two years later. I didn't know. With some time passing, Meow discovered that the town's inhabitants have become addicted to a deadly drug that is mass-produced through May. An emotional conflict breaks out between the two, which ends in May saying that she is willing to kill Meow in order to never go back to the life she once lived, which results in the best fight scene in the entire series. This is by far the greatest episode in the series, which makes me hate every episode that comes after it. None of the episodes have the emotional storytelling and the humor to lighten the dark themes this episode tackles. If Meow wasn't your favorite character by the start of the series, she will be by the end of I Counted on an Enemy. With good voice acting and animation, Carried by the Wind is an anime that will leave you wanting more. And I say this in the most disheartening way possible. I mean, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this series, but for how much potential this anime showed, and then for what I got at the end, I kinda wish this really didn't exist. 
from the fact that it felt like an overpriced DLC. As a matter of fact, Carried by the Wind might be the perfect anime to watch for anyone who does not like anime. There's no sexual themes, minimum exaggerated faces, and dumb dialogue in the middle of fight scenes. Carried by the Wind is a vanilla anime with a crappy ending, but it does have good humor and two characters that I wish had a lot more to do. So again, if I'm rating this anime, I'm I'm just I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. And that's being very generous, okay? I can really give this a five, maybe a four if it caught me on a bad day. You know, but how much anime I've been watching, it's I don't know, I I just feel like I'm just going wherever the wind takes me at this point. X-Driver is an early 2000s anime that has a laid-back style of presentation mixed with a fast-paced narrative with high-tension action scenes. I have to be honest, this anime won me over in the first 15 seconds of its opening. I cannot stop listening to the soundtrack. I already made a custom playlist on my phone. It it's just amazing. However, with the animation of the soundtrack and voice acting being damn near flawless, the biggest problem I had with X Driver is the plot itself because there really isn't a plot, or at least not until like the last two episodes. Until then, it's just random adventures that sometimes can be fun, but in the back of my mind when watching these episodes, I'm thinking, what, what is the point to all this? X Driver is a sci-fi action adventure comedy that takes place in the distant future. In this world, people no longer drive cars. Instead, they rely on artificial intelligence to do the driving for them. But when certain artificial intelligence, aka AI, go rogue and endangers the families and civilians, the community depends on a group of people who specialize in taking down these rogue AI. These people are called X Drivers. So immediately after watching the pilot, I thought, oh my, they just so much can happen with this series. And I started having thoughts. I'm like, okay, so what if the city along with the people are being controlled by power hungry corporations who use AI to invade the privacy of families, but their technology somehow like backfired on the city? Uh, or maybe there's like a group of hackers who are labeled as domestic terrorists who hack into people's cars in order to listen into like private conversations and, and gain enough intelligence to where I, I don't like they can sell that kind of intelligence like enemy countries oh or maybe there's like a supercomputer that wants to destroy all human life the possibilities with this anime are endless and unfortunately this show does none of those ideas as great as a concept for X Driver is, it kind of just stays that way. Every episode, a team of X Drivers come together and stop AI cars from wreaking havoc, and that's pretty much it. There's really nothing deep to this anime, or at least I didn't really find anything that had deep meaning when watching. Every episode besides the last two is a complete throwaway episode that resets itself, which means no matter what happens, if people get hurt or characters go through some sort of self-doubt, when the next episode starts, it's as if nothing ever happens. The biggest problem I have with X Driver story-wise is that there isn't really a story. But again, the last two episodes, a story did form between its characters, which shared needed backstory. As awesome of a concept this anime has, it's beyond frustrating that there's nothing going on in the plot. X Drivers has three main characters. There's Lisa and Lorna who are experienced X Drivers. And then there's Suichi, the newly added X Driver of the team. The chemistry between these characters along with its supporting cast is good. You know, nothing special, it's, it's, just, it's just good. Each character has a distinctive personality and brings all the humor to each episode in their own unique way. Lorna is the leader of the group who is always level-headed and often rallies the team on every mission. She also acts like a big sister toward the other ex-drivers. There's Lisa, the hot-headed, immature, but most talented driver of the group. Throughout the series, she has a kindergarten crush on Suichi. Their chemistry together is pretty funny to watch. And last, there's Suichi, the youngest and highly skilled of the X drivers. He's actually a pretty cool character. Uh, the series made him a focal point in those last two episodes, which actually develops a two-parter story. I have no problem with the characters, but I do wish they would have 
more meaningful adventures with each other because the chemistry is honestly what kept this series afloat for me. So this is a pretty easy anime to watch. There's only six episodes that are 25 minutes apiece. By far the best episode in the series is episode four, Regulations of Love, which is ironically enough a throwaway episode. The episode starts off with the X drivers in the middle of stopping a rogue AI. And before the team could save the day, a mysterious person stops the AI with little effort, leaving the X drivers speechless. The mysterious person reveals themselves, and it was at this moment where the character Rai Kazuma was introduced. She's really an awesome character who has a crappy outfit design. I, okay, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just, I'm just not a fan of characters, regardless of his anime or not, being sexualized for no reason when she's in her x driver's outfit she looks so badass she looks so awesome but when she's out of it i mean she might as well be naked at this point kazuma's presence at the x driver's headquarters creates such a dilemma which ends up being both dramatic and hilarious the episode introduces even more music from the incredible soundtrack and provides needed backstory for a key character in the series regulations of love has great action and goes all out on its animation display but for me Personally, the best part about the episode is how every character is important. The supporting characters who usually only speak a sentence or two are given full scenes and add a perfect blend of comedy, drama, and dialogue. There's also a lot of sexual jokes in this episode, which I felt weren't really needed. Not gonna lie, I did laugh out loud for a few of them. Huh? Whoa! Well, wasn't my conditioner there? My final thoughts on X Driver. Oh, okay, this is hard for me. It's I do like this anime. I can't believe I'm saying that. I do like this anime, but I would I would never recommend this to anyone. The soundtrack is amazing. I'm gonna listen to the soundtrack all day. The characters are cool, but the story it's not it's not there. Even though I like this anime, I can confidently say I will never rewatch this series again. Yeah, there are episodes that are funny, action scenes that will keep you entertained, and the final two episodes are a great climax to the series. I just truly wish that there was more substance to this anime. It's very much like a glass half full, if that makes sense. So X Driver, I enjoyed it for what it was. It's cool. Uh, if I'm going to rate this, I would say a solid 7 out of 10. This anime really surprised me and at the same time disappointed me as well. Also, I just wanted to add that I watched the movie that came after this series, which is called Danger Zone. Uh, it's fucking awful. So don't <laughs> don't watch it. Don't even waste your time on that anime. The animation does not hold up today. The character models are completely changed, which are, oh God, it's just awful. It's, it's absolutely awful. But at least X Driver gave me a soundtrack I can listen to while I make my reviews. anime on this video series is what I believe to be a kid's show. Normally I don't mind watching kid's shows. There's a plethora of children's series I can name and love with all my heart and I can watch at any point of the day. Figure 17 is not one of them. The pace is slow, the characters are unbearable, the action is hard to watch because the dialogue in them makes them want to smash my head against the wall. Maybe it's because I'm not a kid that the characters and the moral messages this series teaches its viewers does not entertain me. I can officially say for figure 17, I hate this anime. So let's talk about the concept for figure 17 because I like the concept but for me it was, it was just poorly executed. Figure 17 is about a shy little girl named Tabasa. After the events of her mother's death, she moves to Hokkaido, Japan with her father so he can live out his dreams of being a baker. After settling into her new home, an alien spaceship crash lands behind her house where she witnesses an alien fighting this whatever the hell this is. As as Tabasa hides in fear, this liquid stuff from the spaceship gets onto her and she morphs into this alien teenage fighting thing and she beats the monster. Now when the fight's over, Tabasa transforms back to her normal self, but the alien morphs into like an identical twin of her. Therefore, you get the premise of the series. 80% elementary school drama, 20% repetitive alien fighting. 
Honestly, this anime is just boring. It's it's boring. It's 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 just boring. It's as simple as that. It, the main character Tabasa is the most annoying and most unlikable anime character I have ever seen on a TV screen. Tabasa is pretty much a wallflower. People acknowledge her. You know they they know that she exists, but no one really cares for her. She's very quiet and soft-spoken, and very much an introvert. Hey, Sheena. Why don't you speak up for once in your life? Um, I uh. She doesn't want to talk to us because she comes from Tokyo. The thing I hate the most about her character is how unsure she is about herself. I mean, I mean sure, like most characters do have to go through self-doubt or, or, you know, some form of hardship. But when Tabasa goes through these situations, she comes off as a whiny, irritating little brat. But I... You must. If you don't, innocent people will get hurt. I can't. Uh, Tabasa! Uh, go! Shoot Tabasa! I can't. Asuka! Every time someone tells her that, you know, you should try something new, you just be a little bit braver, she says, I felt bad inside. Honestly, maybe I'm just old enough to know that when a person has this kind of self-esteem, there is nothing in this world that you can tell them to make them believe in themselves. Every time she opens her mouth and she says she can't do something, I'm literally yelling at my TV and I'm like, yeah, Tabasa, you're right. You can't do it. And you are a fucking loser. There's a lot of characters I dislike that's not really worth mentioning because they're pretty basic and annoying as well. I don't think I can pick an episode I enjoyed. Honestly, this anime was very dreadful for me. Maybe, maybe I can say the first episode, but then even then that was, that was still boring. Even the story revolving on why the aliens are there on earth is stupid. Their powers are stupid. The animation is just plain. I hate this anime. So clearly you all know how I feel about figure 17. I cannot stand this anime. I hate it. I hate the way it looks. I hate the action. I hate the characters. I Even the character design of it is just really boring. I'm just so happy I didn't start with this anime because it would have left such a dark cloud over me while I was watching the rest of these shows. Figure 17 only lasted one season, which I've been told again, that that's a normal thing when it comes to anime. So I guess I can't really blame the storytelling and the character development for that. I'm sure there's going to be even more anime just like Figure 17 and I'm sure as well I'm going to like them just as much. However, unlike Tabasa, I'm willing to be open-minded. So just a recap on my first video of my I hate anime series. I watched four anime. Two I liked, one I felt slightly indifferent about, and one I absolutely hated. For my next installment of the series, I don't, maybe I should just watch something a little bit more mainstream. Um, I know what well, my friend tells me not to watch Attack on Titan because she absolutely loves it and she thinks that I'm just gonna destroy the series because of how I feel about TV shows, but maybe I'll watch that. Full Metal Alchemist, I've been hearing a lot of talks about that, how that's like a most beloved series or a beloved anime. So yeah, maybe I'll watch those two along with, ooh, Naruto. Naruto is something I never cared for watching. I never, I don't know. Growing up, I felt like it was either you watch Dragon Ball Z or you watch Naruto. There was never both, or there's probably both for a lot of people. So I don't know. For me, it was just, it was just Dragon Ball Z. I didn't even bother with that. So that's definitely something I should, I should watch for my next video. But hey, if you want to recommend me an anime series to watch for this series, then please comment below and let me know. I'm willing to watch anything. Also, please comment below if you have a problem with the reasons on why I hate anime. Because honestly, it is an absolute passion of mine to converse to people about TV shows and movies. So until my next installment, I'll see you on the next one. But until then, victory or death, Starfighters. Victory or death!